Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Frank, with FJB Custom Woodcrafts, and I'd like to welcome you back as we begin our next tutorial on CNC woodworking for beginners. I know you're looking forward to learning how to design more 3D woodworking projects, but I want to continue where we left off in the last tutorial by learning all about the Multiply Combine mode. The Multiply mode is different from the other four modes and isn't used very often, but in certain situations, you can use it to obtain 3D results that might otherwise be very difficult to create. So let's dive in. Let's begin by creating a new single-sided job having a width of 12 inches, height of 12 inches, material thickness of 5 inches, Z0 position on the material surface, and XY datum position in the center. Now, tile the 2D and 3D views vertically. We're going to create a composite model composed of individual rectangular boxes of varied dimensions stacked on top of one another. The 3D modeling tools I will use to create the components are only available in Vectric Aspire. So if you are using Aspire, you can follow along and create them yourself. If you are using Vectric VCarve, you can download the Stacked Boxes 3D clip file located in the video description below and import it to follow along with the tutorial. Open the Drawing tab and select the Rectangle tool. The anchor point will be the center of the rectangle, anchored at xy equals 0, 0. Activate the square corner radio button and choose a width and height of 4 inches to create a 4 inch square vector. Rather than using the draw rectangle tool three more times, let's use the offset tool to create the remaining vectors. Select the rectangle vector and then open the offset tool. Choose an offset of inwards left by a distance of 0.5 inches. Check the Create Sharp Offset Corners and select New Checkboxes and deselect the Delete Original Checkbox. Click the Offset button three times to create the remaining square vectors. Then close the Offset tool. In the next step, we're going to import a 3D panel from the Clip Art folder and also create four individual 3D components from the square vectors we just created. Open the Clip Art tab, go to Clip Art, Panels and Shields, then import the Panel 1-2 shield and change the shape height to one inch by using the Component Properties tool. Next, select the outermost square vector Open the Modeling tab and click the Create Shape tool. In the Shape Profile section, there are various shape profiles we can choose from. For our purposes, choose a flat profile with a base height of 0.75 inches and leave the tilt box unchecked. Set the Combine mode to Add and name the component Box 1. Click Apply and then start a new component. Now select the next innermost square vector and repeat the same process, but change the shape height to 2 inches and name the component Box 2. Repeating this process two more times, create Box 3 and Box 4 with thicknesses of 0.5 inches and 0.25 inches, respectively. Examining the component tree, we see that each component we created was placed on top of the previous component in level 1, with each component being added to the top of the previous component in the 3D view. Let's now organize all of our components. Right-click Level 1 and choose Insert New Level. Rename Level 2 Boxes and rename Level 1 Panel. Next. Move all the box components to the boxes level by either selecting all of the box components and dragging them up to the boxes level while holding down the left mouse button, or by right-clicking on the group of selected components and choosing Move to Level Boxes.
We're now ready to learn about the multiply mode. As you recall from basic arithmetic, a number can be converted to a percentage by moving the decimal point two places to the right. For example, 1 equals 100%, 1.25 equals 125%, and 0 0.125 equals 12.5%. When we create a component and set its mode to multiply, remember to conceptualize in your mind's eye that the height of that component at any point on the component will be converted to a percentage by the software and that percentage is what the software uses to determine how the component immediately beneath the multiplied component will be affected. We will now see how applying the multiply mode to a component affects the component beneath it. Since the mode of a component dictates how that component blends with the component immediately below it, and since box 2 is the first component in the box's level with a component below it, we will see how applying the multiply mode to box 2 affects box 1 below it. To truly comprehend what happens though, we will proceed by trying to predict what will happen before applying the change and only then apply the multiply mode to confirm our prediction. Since box 2 is 2 inches thick, disregarding the units and converting to a percentage, 2 becomes 200%. Our prediction, therefore, is that the thickness of the region of box 1 covered by box 2 will change to 200% of its current thickness. Since box 1 is 0.75 inches thick, 200% of 0.75 inches is 1.5 inches. So the thickness of box 1 in that region should change to 1.5 inches. Let's now put our prediction to the test by changing the combine mode to multiply and observing the change in the 3D view. As the distance from the base of box 1 to the top of the area of box 1 affected by the change now measures 1.5 inches, our prediction is correct. Moving on to the next iteration of this process, box 3 measures 0.5 inches in thickness so converting to a percentage, we obtain 50%. If we change the combined mode of box 3 to multiply, the thickness of the underlying component covered by the region beneath box 3 will change to 50% of the current total thickness of the underlying component. Since that total thickness measures 1.5 inches, we predict the new thickness to be 0.75 inches. Changing the combined mode of box 3 to multiply. We again confirm our prediction is correct. Applying the same reasoning to box 4, converting its 0.25 inch thickness to a percentage gives us 25%. So changing its combined mode to multiply should change the thickness of the region underlying box 4 to 25% of its current thickness of 0.75 inches, giving us a new thickness of 25% times 0.75 inches equals 0.1875 inches. Changing the combined mode of box 4 to multiply, we confirm yet again that our prediction is correct. While I realize that going through this process is tedious, I'm convinced that doing so is the only way to fully comprehend how the multiply mode operates, and your understanding of this mode will make it easier for you to comprehend when and why we use it in future tutorials. Combined modes are not limited to individual components, but also apply to individual levels. As you can see, the combined mode of the boxes level is set to add. If we reset all of the component combine modes in the boxes level back to add, what do you think will happen if we change the combine mode of the boxes level to multiply? I'm going to leave the calculations for you to work out for yourself, but if you follow the same procedure that we used previously, you should find that working from the outer box inward, the percentage conversions are 75%, 275%, 325% and 
Knowing that the panel height is one inch, the corresponding heights of the panel beneath these regions in the underlying panel level will then be 0.75 inches, 2.75 inches, 3.25 inches, and 3.5 inches. Now, change the combined mode of the box's level to multiply and inspect the model. The prediction is correct. I encourage you to use other models in the clipart folder, models you create yourself, or a combination of the two to experiment with all five combined modes and get more comfortable using them. The time you spend will be rewarded with dividends as you progress in learning 3D CNC woodworking. In the next video, we will put our newly learned skills to use when we design a project featuring a 3D model placed in an attractively shaped recess. If you enjoyed this video, please support my efforts by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel, and clicking the notification bell so that you'll be notified when my next video becomes available. See you next time.